So listen, I'm here to have fun, man. I want to have fun. I want to talk. I want to talk through some of the stuff on here. Obviously, I'm going to be <laughs> checking, making sure that I'm being captured, right? Because I set this up really nice. But I want to have fun, man. And um, I want. I want to create some. I want you to be comfortable and confident enough to share with me. I'm going to share some stuff about myself and about my journey as it relates to the A game. And I want you all to um, hopefully do that with me. You know what I'm saying? Just be, you know, just just share a little bit. You ain't gotta go deep, deep, deep into the closet and be like, wow, look at this bone I got right here. I don't need all that, right? But but to some degree, um, just share with us and 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 because it, it when we all share, that's when we grow the most, right? And I and I tell people, <laughs> no, no disrespect, the classroom is awesome, but sometimes some professors, some professors, some professors take themselves and their uh, degrees very, very, very serious. So much so that the only thing that matters is that you, you, show, you show them that you take them serious in the ways in which you regurgitate information, whether it's on a paper or some sort, whatever the case may be. And so it's kind of like, I need you to tell me everything I told you in class and write it that way. It's like, but what about my interpretation of the content? What about my experiences? How can I take everything that I've learned and, and, and build it into this paper or this assignment or whatever the case may be. And sometimes if you, don't, if you don't do it the way that they want you to, it's a problem, right? So I think that the classroom is awesome, but I think the, really, the real education is in class interaction and in the interactions. You know, when you're talking to people, uh, listening to people, li listening to different points of views, things of that nature, like that's, that's the real education because we're always going to be dealing with each other. We're always going to be dealing with each other. So the more that we can talk, and engage in dialogue, the better. Everybody cool with that? All right, here we go. So um, if you want to take notes, you can. Um, I think it's pretty powerful. I'm biased because I made it up. But <laughs> I think this is a pretty powerful concept. So what this is is an intrapersonal, interpersonal. You guys ever heard those concepts? You guys know the difference? Intrapersonal. Raise your hand if you don't know what this is. Okay. Intrapersonal is simply uh, your awareness of self, right? Does anybody else have a different definition? When I say interpersonal awareness, it's basically how do I understand myself, right? My experiences, the emotions, everything that I'm experiencing, everything that's going on on the inside, my inner man, my inner woman, my inner person, all that stuff. How do I, do, how, how aware am I? How do I understand that person? That's interpersonal. Interpersonal is how do I communicate what I'm feeling inside? That makes sense? All right. Some people can talk, can talk, but they have no clue what's going on on the inside. Right? And then you have some people who can feel it and, and understand it, but they have a hard time communicating. But we want to be complete. We want to have both of them, right? So it's intrapersonal, interpersonal awareness method to develop emotional intelligence. I didn't, I didn't write intelligence. I just stopped. <laughs> Probably because I was afraid I was misspelling. So I was like, I ain't writing it. All right? Everybody, everybody heard the term emotional intelligence? Everybody, everybody has an understanding of what that is? I'm going to give you my definition. It might be something else if you're looking online. But I look at emotional intelligence as uh, a way of understanding moments and emotions. Well, how, how do you process moments and emotions? Right? So I'm talking to somebody. That person is mad. How do I process this person's anger? This person is um, uh, excited. How do I process this excitement? Um, you know, this is stick with being, this person is insecure. How do I, per, how do I process emotions uh, that are signaling me that this person's insecure, how do I deal with that? Do I clown them? Do I tease them, mock them? Do I support them? Um, do I encourage them, right? There's a time and a place to, when somebody's feeling not so great to challenge them to like man up, right? And then there's other times when you have to support people and be empathetic and put yourself in someone else's shoes and, and, and see if you can feel what, what they're feeling, right? Um, and then there's times when, I don't know, you can say like, Something else. I don't know. I couldn't come up with anything else. But how do you process emotions? And there's people who have incredible emotional intelligence, and no matter if they're dealing with a, a, a child or they're dealing with a teen or a young adult or, or an elder, they, they really know how to emotionally connect with that person, understand what that person might be feeling, what that person might be going through, and, and provide a response that makes sense, right? And I'm pretty sure um, I see a lot of women here. Uh, I used to do this a lot when I was younger and my early. Young, uh, in the early time, early days of my marriage, um, <laughs> I just wasn't really good with the emotional intelligence. I'm an only child, you know what I'm saying? And I, I just, I know, so my wife would be on the verge of tears. I'd be like, we about to cry? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I just don't, you know, I don't want you to cry because if you cry, you're going to make me uncomfortable. So don't cry. So I'm like trying to jet out my trick. You're not crying. Like, if you want to cry, what you crying for? You know what I'm saying? Stupid stuff like that that, people, that, 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 that men do. Um, you know, you, you crying and then I want to fix it. You know, you women, sometimes you don't want, I don't need you to fix it. I just want you to listen. But I'll be trying to fix everything. This, this, let me tell you, oh, they did that work? Okay, this is what I would do. So, let me, so this is what I would do. You're like, but no, nah. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, just stop it. This was, go in there, and it's like, I don't need that. And again, understanding how to help people and support people, you know, when they're going through it, all right? So that's emotional intelligence. So in all of my, learn, in all of my studies in life and everything that I've seen, this, this idea came to me, it's an A game, right? And, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this, this verb, these verbal cues, right? I don't know if you think it's cool or not. I don't care, but I'm gonna show you anyway, all right? So the A game is you got to acknowledge your situation, gotta acknowledge it, Kelsey, gotta acknowledge it, right? And then the second thing is you have to accept it. Bring it in, bring it in, right? You have to accept what we're going through, right? Enough to make friends with it. Um, the next thing we have to do is we have to appreciate it. No, you know, this is like break it in. Like, then you're appreciating it, and then the next thing you have to do is accelerate, right? So that's my that's my sprint right there. Where I got to move on through life with what I've been given. I like that. Somebody gave me a love, a little laugh. I think it was you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is that supposed to be both inspirational and humorous? All right. So uh, that's my A game. So we're gonna walk ourselves through this process. I'm gonna give you this a quick little analogy of why. The A game is, um, give you an analogy why it's important. There's this concept that I came up with, it's called walking with wagons and gems. Walking with wagons, like a wagon, you know, or, you know some, something on four wheels, and gems, right? Throughout life, you're going to um, get stronger and then you're going to decline, right? Everybody agree with that? Are you going to get stronger? You're going to decline, right? And life is going to continue moving on. Life is going to continue moving on throughout this process. And throughout life, as you're getting stronger and eventually going to decline, um, you're going to experience moments, right? And these moments are going to pro provide you with these big clunks of junk, right? They're going to fall in your way. So here you are moving in life, and all depending on where you're at, maybe you are on the incline, maybe you are, you're, you've plateaued, and maybe you're on the decline, I don't know, but you're definitely moving in life, right? Life is flying by, and you got your wagon. And every time that you experience something, a huge clunk of junk falls in your wagon, right? Make sure where, it, 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 all depending on how it falls and where it falls, it can startle you, it can excite you, it can, whatever the case may be, but it's definitely going to bring about some sort of reaction, some sort of emotion. Everybody with me? Everybody got that visual? I'm walking, wagging, experience, plow, moment, right? And based on how that thing hits, it's going to elicit a uh, emotion. Everybody with me, right? Over time, over time, there's a lot of moments in that wagon, right? And you can even move through life, in, 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 yeah, and in, in through life, as you continue to pull this wagon, that thing's gonna get heavy. So now you got, two, you got two choices. You can ignore these moments and emotions and continue trying to pull this wagon as you incline, plateau, and then decline. Y'all got me? And if you ignore what's in this wagon that's continuous, continuing to fill up, inevitably, it's going to be really hard to move through life. Does that make sense? Right? Because I got this wagon. I can't, I, I, I got to pull this wagon. In order for me to move efficiently through life, I at some point got to stop while time's moving. Remember I said time's moving. So while time's moving, I got to stop and chill for a little bit. And I got to take out one of these, one of these hunks of junk and I gotta put it on the table and I gotta chisel it because I gotta see, I wonder what's inside this thing. So I take out my chisel, my hammer, whatever the case may be, and I'm ding, 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 bah! That thing cracked open, I pick up a gym. The gym this big, the hunk of junk is this big, but the gym is this big. But that gym is knowledge. 
Man, okay, let me, let me put that right there. Let me get another one. Time's moving. Time's moving on. Do another one. Ching, 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 ching. Bah! Oh my God. It's the love. It's the love. It's the knowledge and the love, right? And you keep doing it, and next thing you know, you, 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 you realize that in every last one of these hunks of junk, there's a gem in there that represents knowledge, wisdom, understanding, love, and uh, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and love. <laughs> right? I thought, like, is it five of them? I'm about to make one up. So, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and love. And so, what you want to do is, you want to start taking time to break these hunks of chunk, these, these clunks of junk, whatever, break these things down so that you can find the lessons in life. What some people do is they ignore what's in their wagon. And that's when you see that 30-year-old who looked like a 60-year-old because they haven't acknowledged what's in that wagon. They haven't did the work of you know, breaking these, 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 these chunks down so that they can get the goodness out of life. But then you see that person who's 60 and they move like they're 30. Because their whole life they realize it's inevitable. I'm going to incline, I'm going to plateau, then I'm going to decline. It's inevitable. Time's going to keep moving. But I can still catch up if my wagon is filled with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, love. I'll catch up. But you have some people that don't want to slow down and explore what they got going on. And they think they're in a race, but slowly but surely, they get left behind. You dig what I'm saying? So it's critical, it's critical that if in life, if you really want to move, move about life efficiently, age gracefully, be light on your feet, right? Be able to help somebody else out, right? Be, be, be an asset to somebody. Be, 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 be somebody that can truly help someone else out and meet, you, you got the ability to not go above and beyond, but to meet people where they are. I mean, you're the complete package when it comes to providing support for people. In order for that to happen, you got to have a wagon full of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and love. So, even though life might be going at, you know, breakneck speed, you got to be able to say, punk, I, hey, y'all keep going. Y'all keep going. But you don't get left behind. Y'all keep going. I had, I had an experience. I had a moment. I had, emo I, had I, I, I felt this emotion. I gotta understand this. Let me, let me get my chisel, my hammer, let me break this thing down so I can get that knowledge, that wisdom, understanding, that love. And that's what this is all about right here. This is the process that hopefully will help you to inevitably be able to appreciate and accelerate through life, right? And hopefully this right here will be something that you can not only use for yourself, but to help other people moving forward. Everybody cool with that? Anybody got any questions? Anybody think my analogy doesn't work, doesn't make sense? I dare you to say something. <laughs> all right, cool. I'm joking. If you guys want to object, if you guys want to object, please, by all means. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm we, we on the same playing field. I'm just standing up, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I could easily be sitting down doing this, you know what I'm saying? So we, I'm, I'm, you guys are maybe learning, but I'm, I'm hoping to learn from you as well, so, okay? The first thing, why don't you put down uh, acknowledge? If you're taking notes, you don't have to take notes, but I would. All right. So the first thing you have to do is acknowledge your situation. Acknowledge your situation, and you can put slash emotion. So acknowledge the situation, or 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 or. or I'm sorry. Acknowledge the moment and the emotion. Acknowledge the moment and the emotion. Bless you. So the first thing that we want to do is not the moment of emotion. As I said before, there's a lot of times that we deal with people who <laughs> don't want to acknowledge what they've been through. And that can become devastating over time. I know all of you know all about this stuff because of the, 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 what you're studying. I know you guys talk about the, the, the power of um, just communicating and talking and, 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 and sharing. It's, it's powerful. So you have to, you have to talk about what you're what you're experiencing, you have to talk about the moments that you experience and also the emotions that those moments elicit. It's really, I means powerful, bottom line. And even if it, it comes out clumsy, 
if it's not as it's not efficient, and you know, if you're kind of searching for your words or whatever, the bottom line is you we, we have to have to find people that we can kind of download on and just and just vent to and share with as possible. I even tell people like so sometimes people are like, I don't want to gossip. Like, no, nah, you need to gossip, just bring it. Like sometimes you need to just let it out. Just let it out with people with the right people though. All right. The next thing is you have to accept, and this is probably the most powerful thing right here, and this is probably where, this, is, this thing is probably the most powerful concept right here. You have to accept your moments and emotions enough to make friends with them. You have to not accept your moments and emotions Enough, enough, to make friends with them. What do you, what do you mean, Mark? That sounds corny. I'm gonna give you a little analogy, right? I'm gonna give you a little analogy, and then I'm gonna bring it full. So I'm just gonna give you a little story. This is made up. This is not about me. Uh, but I'm gonna give you the story first, the scenario, and then I'm gonna bring it back to help you understand what's sitting with your emotions, with making friends with your emotions. Man, use your imagination. Um, young kid, right? Young kid, six to seven years old, right? You can make them whatever race you want. You can make them whatever gender, whatever the case may be. Six years, six to seven years old. Come downstairs, and they want to put on a performance for the family, right? A musical performance, right? They've been watching videos. They've been practicing. They've listened to the song lyrics and all of that, and so they start doing their song and dance. The kid gets done. The audience laughs at them. The audience is the family members. They laugh at them. Could be mom and dad, could be brother and sister, could be grandparents. You, again, you can create those details. They laugh at them. The kid realizes that he's not being laughed with. He's not, you know, sometimes you laugh in amazement, right? They're not laughing that way. They're laughing at them. Like the person realizes, like, okay, you're laughing at me. You're, you're mocking me. You're teasing me, right? Kid starts to break down. I got a little four-year-old boy, and sometimes he, he'll be on the verge of tears, but he'll try to cry, he'll try to laugh through it, right? Anybody ever seen a little kid try to laugh through tears, try to, you know, psych everybody out? That's what, he, that's what this little kid is doing. Audience is still clowning him, making fun of him. So finally, the kid walks out the room, kind of like trying to escape. And just when you think that the people in the room would recognize what they're doing, the mistake that they've made, they keep going. Kid goes up into his room, and from that point forward, everything that that kid loves, that kid does behind closed doors, right? So what happens when he's, you know, or when the person is five or six, continues when they're 10, 15, 20, now the person's 27 years old, and really having a hard time, right? In society, with relationships, working to find love, because They've been living life like an introvert their whole life when in fact they were an extrovert. All they wanted to do was sing and dance and, 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 and entertain, right? They loved it, but they had a really bad experience when they were six or seven. And that made that person feel embarrassed. That made that person feel nervous and uncertain and insecure to ever, ever puts forth something that they loved on display ever, ever again, right? And a moment happens that brings them back to when they were six or seven and they realize, huh, now I know I'm insecure. Now I know I'm insecure. Now, now I know why I'm, 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 I'm so out of sorts. Now I know I'm so offbeat. I've been living life like an introvert and I'm an extrovert. I've been living life like an introvert my whole life because of something that happened when I was six. So what we have to do when we experience things is we have to make friends with our emotions. So like when that, at some point, it would have been nice if that kid could have, when they were young, made friends with embarrassment. Why am I embarrassed? Embarrassment, why, why are you here? Insecurity, why are you here? Why, 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 why are you so powerful and impactful and present in my life. I mean, we all have moments and then we experience something and that's when it's like, okay, 
where did you come from? Anger, where did you come from? And that's what anger might say. Oh, you know where I came from. Remember when you were coming up? You were like three or four. And, and every time things got tough in the house, your parents acted out this way. They were negative. They got angry. They got angry at each other. They got angry with you. They got angry with... Remember, remember that? And remember, and remember how when you started to exude the same behavior traits, they, they, they thought it was funny. They didn't talk you through it. They thought it was funny. Or maybe they got angrier with you. They got angry because you got angry. And no one ever talked to you about it. No one ever helped you process it. Now, here you are, 35 years old, and you got kids, and you can't see any humor in their hiccups, mistakes, so on and so forth. All you want to do is just get angry. You dig what I'm saying? And that's why we got to sit, have, have, we got to make friends with our emotions from time to time and learn, like, where you come from? And what you trying to tell me about myself? Anger, like, man, I'm trying to tell you, bro, like, you got to find a way to reverse or change the trajectory or change this, this generational thing that's been happening in your family. You got to change that. You got to be the one because your, your, your parents ain't get it yet. So you got to be the one. So everybody angry in your family, okay, you got to be the one to change that because if you don't figure it out, your kids are going to operate the same way. So this is what I'm here to do, bro. You take it or leave it. But if you don't do something about it, I'm just going to keep showing up in your life every other week, every other day until you do something about it. Does that make sense? So we start thinking about accepting our moments, accepting our emotions enough to make friends with them. So I, I find myself a lot of times thinking like, why am I, why do I show up this way? Why, like, you know, I give you another example and then um, I'm going to give it to you a little bit before we shut, shut it down. My son, my oldest son, Mar, um, 12 years old. I watch Mar play basketball. He's not physical. Not very physical. He's learning how to be physical. He's not very physical. And he grew up playing trio blocks, Legos, doing things that were very cerebral, right? Because we had a very quiet house when he was my firstborn. We had a very quiet house at first. Now I got three kids. It's total anarchy. But before that, <laughs> it was very peaceful. I grew up an only child. So my parents weren't loud, and I wasn't loud. My house was quiet. So when my kid, when I had my kid, what do I want? quiet house. So when my kid goes to school and starts bringing home you know, certain behaviors or whatever the case may be, what do I do? Shut it down because I want my quiet house. You dig what I'm saying? So when my son wants to play in the mud, I didn't play in the mud. Right? I didn't play in the mud. I didn't do that stuff. So when my son wants to do it, no, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, uh, you're not playing in the mud. No, 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 no shoes or that outfit. But he's a kid. I never forget my son one time we was at this is terrible. We was at the pool. This boy wanted to play in the water. We at the pool. <laughs> he wanted to play in the water. We at the pool. <laughs> he five, four, five, he wanna play in the water. I'm on him. No. He didn't have any uh, swimming trunks. You're like, he a kid, like this, this. No. And it goes back to my upbringing. And not to say that my parents were, you know, that strict, but it was something about my upbringing that I was, that I was chasing, that I was holding on to. And I wasn't willing to adjust so that I can make sure that my kid had a better childhood than mine. Now, my childhood was dope, but he could still have a better childhood than mine. Everybody, everybody understand where I'm coming from. So it was one of these moments where I was, I, I realized Mark, why are you so uptight? You uptight because back in the day when you was, and they did this and that, and that's why you so and so forth. Real quick, can anybody relate to that? Can anybody relate to that, that idea? Can you, you know, if, I'll, I'll ask this question. Can anybody relate and then can you speak on it, even if you want to speak in code, you want to tell us all your business, but you want to speak, can you then speak on a moment where you, you had emotions about something at the age you are now or whatever, and then you realize that it came from something that took place back in the day. Well, I have three kids, 27, mm -hmm. 25, 21, and I saw that growing up. 
because mm -hmm. I came from a very authoritarian, abusive father. I changed it with my kids. Yep. But what I didn't change was I married an abusive husband that I didn't wake up to until 26 years into the marriage when it became, I couldn't escape For sure. it. For sure. Right? Because I hadn't dealt with mm. all of that back then. Mm. And why I changed it for my kids, and they saw that I changed it for sure. them, my son said to me, you did that for us. Mm -hmm. You forgot to do it for yourself. Your kid told you that? Yeah, my son. Jeez Louise, that's powerful. Right, well, he was 23 at the time when he told me, but he's so, like, Mom, it's powerful. you taught us, but you didn't change it for yourself. Wow. And then it smacks you over the head. Sure. And that's and it's and it's, and it's going to continue. It's like and that's what you have to you, that's when you have to acknowledge it at some point. Right. And then at some point you have to accept it. Because if you don't acknowledge it, it's just gonna keep banging you over the head. Like some people running through running from stuff. Alcoholism, drug abuse, they're running for something. Like and at some point you gotta acknowledge what's in front of you. You have to. But how many of us don't? And look, some of and look, everybody in this room, there's something that we may be running from. There's something that we might not want to acknowledge because now I gotta deal with that. Because see, if I if you if you have if you if you know that this is what's going on and it ain't right, and you acknowledge it, and then you don't do anything about it, now it's a character issue. And many, many of us don't want to deal with the reality that maybe our character isn't as strong or flawed, right? So what we do is if I can just continue to ignore. What's going on back here? Now I got to deal with it, and I have to. I don't have to address the fact that my character is suspect, especially in the face of adversity and hard times. You feel what I'm saying? So some of us intentionally distract ourselves because a whole bunch of stuff that we don't have to acknowledge and deal with. But if you truly want to help everybody else out, you got to do that thing, right? Because there's no way that. You're going to be able to help people through this stuff if you're not willing to be the mad scientist and try it on yourself first. And I'm going to tell you something. This is what I learned as a basketball trainer. When I train, I, I put myself through it. Like when I was, I, I do more, I, I, I do more of this stuff than I do basketball training, but I used to put myself through it. Like today, today I worked out, I had some guys I worked out. I put myself through it because I want to feel everything that they're going through. And I feel that there's, some, there's, a, there's a spiritual thing that takes place, and I'm gonna just keep this real short. The spirit feels, the heart loves, the mind thinks, the body performs. People thought mental toughness was it? No, mental toughness is nothing compared to spiritual toughness. The spirit loves. I'm sorry, the spirit feels. The spirit feels. The heart loves. The mind thinks. And the body performs, right? How I feel will dictate how I love, and it will dictate how I think, right? So, shoot, I lost my thought, man. My bad. It's okay. It's okay. I lost my thought already because when I get to that zone, that's a, that's another chamber that I can go into. That's that's that's, that's, that's powerful. But the thing, oh yes. There's a spiritual component that I feel when I'm talking to people, and I don't have to, when I'm talking to people about how I can help them out with their game, and when, they feel it. They don't have to know everything that I've been through, but they can feel it. There's a spiritual connection. They can feel it. They can feel the spiritual connection. They can feel you've been through some things, you done conquered some things, I'm listening. Now, how many times have you been dealt with somebody that was trying to help us out, and we want to hear them? Because we knew you ain't been through what I'm going through, so you can't really rap with me. But there's been times when you, somebody, and it could be somebody you know, somebody you know for a long time, a short time, but it's times when you deal with people, and right away, you connect it. Because there's a spiritual connection. You can feel it. I can feel the work that you put into yourself. I can feel it. So if you're not putting in that work on yourself daily, intentionally, Deliberately, on purpose, then you're going you're not gonna be as effective. Does that make sense? Because the one thing that we don't lose is instincts. And you want to make sure that when you're dealing with somebody and they're going through it, 
and you like, I hope these, inst- I hope this person's instincts kick in to realize like I'm, I'm, I'm for real, and I'm, and I'm here, I'm here, and I ain't going nowhere. Accountability and support on the highest level. I'm walking with you, arm and arm. We're gonna get there. We're gonna go over there. We're gonna get to there somehow. And I just need you to, I need you to believe in me, even though you don't know me. Everybody with me? All right, cool. Last, the next one is appreciate. Gotta appreciate what we've been through. And that's the beauty of it. So once I, once I, once I recognize what this moment and this emotion is telling me, I can, I should, I should be, I should be excited. I'm, 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 I'm happy. I, I'm happy I fell off. I'm happy I experienced failure. I'm happy that we, we in this room, and we having this argument. I'm happy about it. Right? Or I'm grateful. Or, or I'm grateful for it. Because right now. Right now, at this very moment, I realize it. Now I realize I'm so stubborn. At this very moment, I realize, I now realize, I realize why I'm so insecure. I realize why I'm so jealous. I get it now. I've been jealous all my life, wondering what, why. Now I get it. Now I can do some things about it. I can do some things about it. And it goes back again. How many of you all really want to be coached up? How many of you guys really want to be, 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 be built up, right? Because if you really want to be coached up, you really want to be built up, then that means that the, the, the criticism, you got to be about that life. But from a basketball standpoint, I know people that say, coach, coach me, bro. I want to be great. Second, you say something like, yo, fam, your footwork, bro, I got this. I thought you wanted to be coached up. I thought you wanted to be great. Let me coach you. Coach, I got this, dog. I got this. I'm like, hey, 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 hey fam. So the way that you hold the ball, coach, coach, I'm good, I'm good. So now you say you want to be great, you say you want to be amazing at this, but now you don't want to get coached up. So it's one of them things where if you can't acknowledge what you've been through, then that, again, then that says if you can't appreciate what you can't appreciate what you've been through and find the find the beauty in it, like, now it's a character thing. Now how now how bad do you really want to help these people? How bad do you really want to grow? So on and so forth. I see the time, man. No, you good. So you're trying to like jump off the seat. No, I tell you, man. <laughs> I'm almost there. You see accelerate right there. <laughs> so after we acknowledge our moments and emotions, we accept our moments and emotions enough to make friends with them, right? And this is an ongoing process every day. I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to stick, go back here one time real quick. Because I think this can help. This, this, is, this is what I use in uh, unconscious bias work. And I think Monica was talking about this. And she was saying, this is the person that was sitting right here. She was saying the people that, that, that you feel the most uncomfortable around, those are the people you just have to engage. I, I, yes. And ask the question, why? What inspires, what, what, the, the, my, my, my question for last year was, what inspires behavior? What inspires legacy culture and behavior? So what I'm saying is, how come every time I get around these people, I get tense? What happened? She, she said it beautifully. I, I, when it comes to black men and, and this people and, and uh, adult black women, I'm good. But when it comes to adolescent black girl, I get nervous. I get, I get uncertain. Why? Is it because of what I heard on the news? Is it because of the, 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 my social circle and how they talk about this demographic of people? Is it because of something that happened to me when I was really young? I, I work with a football program and we do some life, I do some life coaching, or some purpose recognition coaching. White boy from either, this is gonna sound stupid, either from Kansas or Canada, right? I know it's all over the place. This is from Kansas or Canada. I was, I was eavesdropping. Not too good though. <laughs> It's him, it's, it's three seats, it's, it's like, it's like uh, nine seats. Black kid, black kid, black kid, black kid, Kansas, Canada, black kid, black kid, black kid, black kid. And they all just probing this dude with questions. Where you from? Do you like rap? Like all the stuff that they like. Do you like rap? Do you know who this rapper is? Like everything that they about, they asking him the question. And so, you know, he like, nah. Like, and, no, and then it got to the point where like, no matter how he said no, it was the most weird thing in the world. Like, 
Like, no. Like, oh, look at him. He's saying, like, no. Nah. Like, dog, he's saying no. Like, what do you want me to, you know? They just, they just, at this point, they just, like, looking for a reason to clown me. There's one white boy. One white boy. Cat a corner. But he was, he was locked in with the brothers. So he was basically just, you know, piling on. <laughs> at that moment, who knows what that might do to him long term? Sounds silly. But who knows what might happen to him long term because of that moment? Will he try to sit by himself next week? Will he try to come in later so that he doesn't have to, you know, so he can gauge where everybody else is sitting and sit somewhere else? Will he come in early so he can sit at the front so that he can be, you know, because brothers don't want to sit by the front. So, like, will he try to sit at the front so that, like, I can be, I, I don't, you know, I know most guys don't want to sit up here with me, so I sit at the front. You see what I'm saying? And then as he get older, how will that moment right there impact the way he deals with other people? Now, he may grow up and know this is why when I get into certain situations and I get around certain company, I become a little defensive. I become a little quiet because this, ha this, thing, this thing that happened when I was younger. But if he doesn't know what inspires his behavior, unbiased kicks in. And, and unproductive behavior kicks in. So that's why it's important that we, we accept these moments in our life and we ask the question, what inspires the way that I show up? I have to figure this out. And as you start thinking about the people that you're going to engage with, you have to figure out, if I'm uncomfortable, why? Because you can't be judgmental if you're curious. That makes sense? If you, if you get really judgmental and you're like, man, I can't stand this, but why? Get curious. Radical curiosity cures judgment. Y'all with me? I'm almost done, man. Appreciate your moment. Appreciate what you've been through. And now you can accelerate through life. Simple as that. You can accelerate through life. You got your wagon. You're getting older. All right? You know, you're plateauing, you're staying, whatever, you're, you're, you're plateauing, you're reaching your prime, whatever. And here you are, just a, a, a array of hope, right? Every time people get around you, they feel better. They just feel good. They don't even know why. They get around you, and it's something about what you've been through and what you put yourself through and the lot, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the love, that every time they deal with you, it, they just feel a little stronger. They feel a little taller, feel a little faster. They just feel better. And that only comes from the way in which you take the hunks of junk in your barrel, you find the knowledge, the wisdom, understanding, the love, and then you move through life with grace, efficiently. And it shows up in your work and it shows up in your person. That's it. This anybody have any questions, any responses, I'm going to turn this off. Good job, Mark. <laughs>